because it's also going to cover the factors that um, I frequently encounter in the tasting space um, that you might encounter yourself. And then, of course, just how do we mitigate um, those uh, areas of concern? All right, so medically, all right, I have to read this. Um, so according to the Medical Free Dictionary, um, it's a psychological uh, state of physical and emotional exhaustion um, thought to be a stress reaction to, re to reduce the ability to meet the demands of one's occupation. All right, that's a mouthful, but pretty much in layman terms, it's just being overworked and exhausted. Um, unfortunately, there's still a stigma around this, um, just like with most mental pr problems. Um, it's seen as intention seeking, uh, being unorganized, unprioritized, and probably just being lazy. But we'll get to that point later on. All right, common factors that contribute to burnout. Bad managers, we've all experienced that. The toxic environments, uh, unclear responsibilities like a job description. I don't know how many people who actually have a job description that's accurate to what they're doing. Um, unrealistic workload. Lack of growth, personal growth within an organization. And of course, the uh, lack of control, which obviously leads to the, uh, the unrealistic amount of workload. Uh, conflicting values, personal values versus organizational values. Uh, if you like testing games or playing games and you're going to go into fintech, it's a different ball game there. Um, also, incompetent workers, being always connected with social media, and of course, genetics. So, common symptoms. Uh, this is pretty much going to read this uh, off the side of a some medication, but symptoms could be exhaustion, frustration, cynicism, uh, constant negative uh, emotions, a lack of concentration, interpersonal problems at work and at home, and that probably goes to frustration again, uh, preoccupation with work, is uh, typically when you have a work event or a function and somebody will say, listen, we have to release tomorrow, I have to work tonight and do a report or something like that. Um, a general decrease in satisfaction in life, if you want to feel like that, and of course a reduced performance. Now, if you look at these symptoms, ironically, you will see a correlation between uh, depression and anxiety, and that's why uh, diagnosing burnout is actually quite difficult. So that makes life a little bit harder for us. So the four that I frequently encountered is obviously overtime, um, a culture fit. Uh, project and product expectations, that's pretty much expectations in general, and the imposter syndrome. And the imposter syndrome is that you, when you actually feel um, you're not worthy in the team that you're actually functioning, even though there's enough evidence to show that you are competent in, in the work that you do. <coughs> Alright, now, how I see these areas fit together is um, top to bottom, culture fit. That usually starts with the recruitment process. If they re recruit the individual for the wrong organization and his uh, personality doesn't fit that well, you know, you're going to start running into problems. And then there's expectations on you. So that's typically your uh, role and responsibilities, uh, which obviously can lead to overtime. If you're not skilled enough, oh my gosh, uh, if you're not skilled enough, um, you're going to start doing overtime. And then, of course, the imposter syndrome. If you feel threatened or your uh, pressure from the team members, you're going to start working overtime to try and get, uh, get the, uh, the kudos. So obviously, getting started. Try to understand what's causing the problem before you start um, seeing, uh, seeing a doctor or anything like that. Take meaningful breaks, you know, um, probably not smoking, but getting fresh air, um, stretch, hug someone, that actually do help. Um, keeping a mood journal, that was kind of tough for most men. Um, keeping a diary on the emotions, what flares you up, what do you find as um, retentive, retentative, and of course empathy. Understand why the other person is making those kind of decisions. Generally, people make decisions based on information, but also based on emotion. And it's very rare that you actually um, have a Vulcan working for you in, in your team. Um, oh, that's a Star Trek reference, not Star Wars. <laughs> um, looking at overtime. So, managing your typical pauses, interruptions, Facebook, those kind of things. Those are, I found these days, are the biggest culprit of uh, ending up in overtime. Um, terrible meetings, meetings that you pitch up, nobody shows up, or half the team shows up or there's no agenda and people just wander off into the other thing. Um, ooh, this is a good one, yes. Um, trying to sustain um, uh, an unaffordable lifestyle. You know, I remember back in, back in my early days, I actually worked overtime to pay for my lifestyle. And if you work in London for seven, seven pounds an hour, <laughs> you need to do overtime to pay for something, for rental. So that's definitely something to think about. Um, compensation. 
um, a lot of companies give you time in lieu, and that's something that you need to be careful about. Because you usually have to take that time in a specific time, and if you're in Agile Scrum, with two weeks sprints, you're barely going to get time to actually take time off and actually recharge. The other compensation is obviously paid over time, but you have to be careful of that, because that doesn't regenerate your energy either. Um, so be careful of what you ask for. Um, working from home, you know, try to shut off. Um, don't always try to finish reports at home. Um, rather do something else like learning and not Netflix. Um, try to cap your overtime. If you have to do billables 160 hours a month, start with 20% of that, you know, 32 hours, that you will do overtime and from that try to improve. Um, and stop covering up. You know, there's a difference between um, supporting a team member or team members and being bullied into trying to do the work for them. So that's also something to be concerned about. And of course, if you have an HR team, have a chat with HR because staff retention is something that matters to them. All right, the imposter syndrome, um, determine the true value. Everybody wants you to do work for them or everybody wants to work. And there's also the um, performance management aspect of a performance review of how do you delegate work. So some people literally take everything and just give it to somebody else and they will usually go to the person who always says yes. Correct training. Uh, make sure you get the correct training. Training that's applicable to the problems that you're facing in the organization and that's actually, and that's also being appreciated by the organization. I find a lot of companies send their people on training but that's actually end up more of, a, more of a tax benefit than actually helping the team to actually becoming better. Um, determining your purpose in a team. Sometimes when you're working with high functioning individuals in a team you might feel like you might be useless especially in testing when your dev team says, listen, we're just writing a story, you can't test it. Try to find out where the weaknesses are, it's things that they hate doing, you know, documentation is one of them, or expanding on the unit tests. Um, just, just branch out a little bit more and actually trying to fill in those cracks. Um, also, also, think about yourself as always um, a work in progress. Something that helped very well is get yourself a life coach and make sure the life coach, life coach um, personality matches yours and the way of thinking, else you're just going to have a conflict there quite quickly. Um, and mentoring, you know, if you start mentoring, you start seeing the gaps between what you actually know and what the other rest of the team members know as well. And they also need contributing. Um, projects and products. So projects, um, expectations is literally your budgets, your schedules, resources, and product um, expectations is literally your um, quality characteristics of a project. So understanding your stakeholders. How do you measure their confidence in the product quality? So start focusing on it, those things. And that's ties in with keep it lean. Um, and then obviously start negotiating. You, know, you can't say yes for everything, everybody can't have everything, so you need to learn how to negotiate on just giving them the bare minimum what, they, what will be sufficient for them. And of course stick to a plan, uh, or fix the reason why the plan was done in the first place. I found so many companies write a plan just to get a budget sign off, but nobody follows the damn thing. Um, and of course start when you're doing planning, start thinking about the inclusion factors of what impact quality of the system, or the product, or the team. Um, how is the requirements going to be managed? The, um, who's going to do the support? Who's going to, um, how's going to, who's going to maintain the code afterwards? And those factors also need to be included or being mentioned to your, to your test manager or your project manager. Culture fit. All right, starting with um, HR usually or um, interviews. Make sure before you go for interviews that you actually have a common purpose and a vision that resonates with the organization. How's you just going to have an uphill battle? Um, roles and responsibilities. Um, if you struggle to understand what, you, what your strengths are, I recommend um, a personality test, you know, Myers-Briggs, um, it's not the black and white, but also start looking at other assessments like the um, Gallup Strength Finder to understand where your strengths and weaknesses are a little bit and start working on that to actually fill in those responsibilities. Um, developing trust is actually pretty much one of the most difficult ones that I've found, especially when big organizations have multiple vendors involved and contractors. They all have their own agenda trying to achieve something and it's obviously trying to make more money. So as a, if you can figure out how to um, build the trust between the team members, they can focus on their work without being impacted by the policies or the politics. Um, the test policy, try to figure out why testing is necessary, why the organization is doing testing in the first place. A lot of them just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, some of them actually have to do it for compliance. And then of course if you have some free time or um, have some interest, have a look at Marcelo's hierarchy of needs. It's like that pyramid uh, where Wi-Fi is the biggest requirement for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is actually just trying to help motivate your team and, and get them to buy in. Great. 
Um, getting help. Go and talk to a doctor. If you keep the, uh, a mood journal, this will actually help a lot better. Um, and maybe put you in the right course, I don't know. Um, but doctors do help. But also start using technology. There's an app for it. Um, support groups. I haven't seen any support groups locally, but usually you can go to the depression groups or the anxiety groups, and that usually covers the same, same, same kind of thing. Family and friends. Um, you will find out if it's genetically uh, connected to you. Maybe, maybe not. And of course, then there's self-help. If you download this um, uh, presentation from GitHub, yeah, yeah. Um, you'll get all my notes that I've had on the right-hand side, and you can actually look at these resources um, that I used for my research. So there's a lot of tape videos around this, which is actually quite interesting. Um, and there's a hell of a lot of reading um, and a lot of white papers. No problem. <laughs> like it with music. Um, so the conclusion is actually just we need to look after ourselves physically and mentally. You know, um, we live in a world where we're constantly being pushed um, to our boundaries and trying to understand, especially as knowledge workers, you, you can't keep up. Even the education system struggles to keep up with what's happening out there. So, so, and that's also an aspect of bad capitalism. So if you understand what capitalism is, what's making money, just be aware of those things. Um, and once you're becoming aware of this, this puts you in a position to actually take the appropriate steps to, to fix things. Cool beans. That's it.